Okay, today we want to look at um, conditional probability a little bit more. And if you remember our last multiplication rule, we had the probability of A and B is equal to what? The probability of A times, and then the conditional part is what? Probability of B, given that A has definitely occurred, okay? Now, some of your homework and quiz problems are going to ask about the conditional part. So they're going to ask you to find this, okay? So we could use just a little bit of algebra here, and we can solve and rewrite this equation in this form, where this is equal to what, okay? So right now I have this is equal to this times this. If I wanted to get this part by itself, how do I undo multiplication? Divide, okay? So I'm going to solve this for the probability of B given A. You'll get the probability of both A and B divided by the probability of A, okay? And so you'll utilize that formula for problems specifically that are set up that are asking about a conditional probability. I will give you an example right now. In a restaurant, 95% of the customers order pizza. In a restaurant, 95% of the customers order pizza. Okay. If 65% order both pizza and salad, if 65%, 65%, Order both pizza and salad. And then here's the question. Find the probability a customer who orders pizza will also order salad. Find the probability that a customer who orders pizza will also order salad. Okay, so if you look at the question, find the probability that a customer who orders pizza, so this customer definitely orders pizza, that's given, right? So we know this customer orders pizza, but what the question is that that person will also order a salad, okay? So could you rephrase that in a way where we could apply this given statement? So in this problem, I have the probability of B given A. In this statement, what is B and what is the given part? Um, B is the salad. And what is the given part? Ordering pizza. Right. It's definite that he's ordering pizza, right? What's the probability of order salad? Okay. So what I'm trying to find is the probability of ordering salad given that they definitely order pizza. Right? Is everybody with me on that? That's what this question is asking. Okay. Well, it's going to require you to know two things. The probability of ordering both. So in this case, both is salad and pizza, right? And am I given that percentage? What's the probability of ordering both? 65%, 0.65, divided by the probability of ordering, and here A was the given part, right? The probability of ordering pizza. Do I have the probability of ordering pizza? 95%, okay? So I won't be able to solve it unless they give me both of those, and they were kind enough to do that. So take out your calculator, 0 0.65 divided by 0 0.95, And let's go four decimal places. And what do we get here? 0.65, 0.95, 6842. Okay, so you'll have some homework questions where 
it's better to put it in this form, and then you can solve the given parts. Okay? So have this formula handy, and then just, in this case, B was salad and A was pizza. Okay? Do you so, want us to write it, the answer like that, or as a percentage? Uh, so you can write it this way or as a percentage. Either one's fine. Okay. Okay, great. Now let's look at some um, more multiplication rule problems. And then we need to put in a few questions with at least in there too. Okay, next setup. AAA reports that 54% of car accidents are caused by a driver's error. AAA reports, 54% of accidents are caused by a driver's error. If three accidents are chosen at random, find these probabilities. Okay, so here we go. If three accidents are chosen at random, find these probabilities. Question number one, all are caused by driver's error. Question number two, none are caused by driver's error. Question. At least one is caused by driver's error. So we're getting into at least one is caused by driver's error. Okay, those are my three questions. Now, the way we attack this problem, it's very similar to the problem we did um, about left-handers. If 10% of the population are left-handers, what's the probability that three random people will all be left-handers, right? So in this case, uh, AAA reports 54% of accidents are caused by a driver's error. If we just choose three random accidents, what's the probability that all three are caused by a driver's error, okay? If I choose one accident, what's the probability that accident is caused by a driver's error? 0.54. Okay, if I choose another accident, what's the probability that one's caused by driver's error? 0.54. And again, one more, 0.54. Okay, and that would be it for the first problem. So 0.54 times 0.54 times 0.54, or 0.54 to the third power. And you get about 1575, approximately. One five seven five. Okay. Question number two. None are caused by driver's error. So if I pick an accident, what's the probability that accident was not caused by driver's error? 0.46. How did you get 0.46? You subtracted it from one. You subtract it from one, right? And what is that called? Using the complement. Complement. Okay. Uh, the second one also not caused. 0.46. And the third one. 0.46. Okay, so I use the complement, and then I multiply that three times in a row, and let's see what that comes out to. 0973, 0.0973, approximately. Okay, now here is the question. At least one is caused by driver's error. So we talked a little bit about this in the notes. I can't do at least one unless I know what the complement of at least one is. 
What is the exact opposite of at least one? At least one. Yeah, it's just none, okay? And I think I did the example, if we take at least one test in this class, well, what's the opposite of taking at least one test? Taking no tests, that's the opposite, okay? So the way you solve this problem, the probability of at least one is equal to the complement one minus the probability of none. Okay? So again, at least one is one minus the probability of none. So to solve this problem, I need to find the probability of none. Well, guess what? We just did that in problem two, right? We solved none. None is approximately 0 0.0973. So we're going to do 1 minus 0 0.0973. And let's see, what does that come out to? Approximately 9027. OK. But on a quiz or a test, I've kind of baby stepped you guys through this problem, but I could just have this question. Does that make sense? 54% of accidents are caused by a driver's error. Boom. What's the probability that at least one is caused by driver's error? Okay, and you're gonna need to know how to do that problem. Does that make sense? Okay, I can't do at least one, but I can do none. At least one is one minus the probability of none. Well, what's the probability of none? Well, if it happens, it's 54, so not happening is 46, right? Three times, and then one minus that. Okay, so it's a difficult problem. We baby step through it, but you're gonna have to be able to do it without us, doing your own baby steps. Okay. All right, let's try another one. Um, a coin is tossed three times. What's the probability of getting at least one tail? Try that one. A coin is tossed three times. What's the probability of at least one tail? We can use multiplication rule to solve that one, but we could also use sample space to solve that. So we'll look at both methods, and we can compare them. Okay. So we flip a coin three times, and our question is, what's the probability of at least one tail? Probability of at least one tail. All right, what's the complement of at least one tail? None. None. None tails, right. So one minus the probability of no tails. All right, so here we go. One minus, I'm gonna flip a coin three times. What's the probability of not getting a tail? One half, 0.5, right? What's the probability of not getting a tail? 0.5, and a third time, what's the probability of not getting a tail? Did everybody see that? So it's one <coughs> minus no tails. So that would have to be heads, heads, heads. Or no tail, no tail, no tail. OK, great. So one minus 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, which is 0 0.875, or 7 eighths. You could do fraction, or you could do <coughs> decimal. All right, let's say I asked on the test for you to do this problem using sample space. Could you show me that one, too? What's the sample space for flipping a coin three times? What could happen? Tail, tail, tail. Right. Tail, tail, tail. Tail, tail, head. Tail, head, tail. Tail, head, head. Head, head, head. <clears throat> head, head, tail. Head, tail, head. Head, tail, tail. There's eight things. What's the probability of not, or of getting at least one tail? This one has at least one tail, this one has at least one tail, this one does, this one does, this one does, this one does, and this one does. Everybody see that? So in seven of the eight things, there's at least one tail. At least one could be one or more. Okay. So sample space, the answer is seven eighths. Of course you're going to get the same answer either way. Questions on that problem? Focusing on at least or at most and using the complement, okay? All right, let's step up the difficulty just a little bit here. And let's try this one. Again, we're doing an at least problem. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Um, at a college, there are five chemistry teachers and six physics teachers. Okay. So we have five chemistry teachers and six physics teachers. All right, great. A committee of four teachers is to be selected from these 11. Okay. A committee of four teachers is to be selected from these 11. What's the probability at least one of them is physics? Okay. So the probability at least one on the committee is physics. The probability at least one is physics. All right, so again, I can't do it straightforward. I can't do at least one is physics. What can I do? Probability of no physics. So one minus the probability of no physics teacher. Okay? I can do the probability of no physics teacher. How many teachers are we picking? <laughs> four teachers. And I want you guys to give me the probability of all four teachers not being a physics teacher. Okay? How do I do that? What's the probability the first teacher I pick is not a physics teacher? How many teachers are there? Eleven. How many of them are not physics teachers? Five. Everybody with me on that? That's a combination of things that we did last class together with at least nine months. All right, the first teacher is not physics. What's the probability that the second teacher is not physics, given that the first teacher is not physics? Four, 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 four out of ten. What's the probability the third teacher is not physics? Three out of nine. Two, and two out of eight, right? So how come this problem, the denominator changed, and the other problem didn't? What was the difference? You're not like putting the teacher back. Yeah, so we have the sample space in front of us. We know there's 11 teachers, and we know we're taking one away each time. Whereas when you give me a big 54% for all automobile accidents in the whole world, that number's so large, we can just use the independent rule for that. Okay. All right, um, yeah, so what does this come out to? I have no idea. So as a fraction, I'm getting 65 out of 66. So far, 1 minus 1 over 66, which is 65 out of 66, which is approximately 9848. OK? Five chemistry, six physics. What's the probability at least one of them on this committee is physics. You can't do it straightforward, but you can do the complement. You can do none of them are physics, and they do one minus that, and that equals at least one is physics. All right? OK. Um, we're going to end on something really simple. Sometimes they give you some data from a table, and then they can ask conditional probability questions from the table. And it's really easy. For example, let's take a look at this. 80 students in the school cafeteria were asked if they favor a ban on smoking in the cafeteria. And these are the results. So we have, you're either a freshman or a sophomore. And these people favored the ban on smoking, 15 freshmen, 23 sophomores. And these people opposed the ban. <clears throat> there were 27 freshmen, five sophomores. And then no opinion, we had eight and two. Okay. 
Okay? There's two questions. Find the probability the student opposes the ban given that he or she is a freshman. So question number one, what's the probability opposing given freshman? And question number two, what's the probability favoring given sophomore? Anytime you have a table of actual whole values or real values, it's really helpful to do totals, okay? So in the next minute or two, let's just go ahead and do some sums here and here, and let's do some sums over here as well, too. So add horizontally and add vertically, okay? So fill in those totals real fast. So let's see, what do I get here? 38 looks like, 32, 10. And over here, is that 50? And 30. Okay, great. So a total of 80 students. All right, so this is how conditional probability works from real data like this. The probability a student opposes given that they were a freshman, okay? So the given part is just going to function as your denominator. How many total freshmen are there? There's 50. So that's going to be the denominator. And what's the probability they opposed? 27 out of 50. Does everybody see that? So the oppose is the given part. That becomes your denominator. And then how many of them opposed? 27. Question number two, what's the probability they favored given that they were a sophomore? So again, given that they were a sophomore, how many sophomores are there? And what's the probability they favor? 20. Okay. What's the probability of a sophomore given that they favor? What if I swap those on you? How does it change? What's the denominator now, given that they favor the band? 38. 38. And how many of those 38 happen to be sophomores? 23. 23. Does everybody see that? So just make sure you have the denominator straight, and then it's relatively easy to get the new one. OK. Questions on that? So the given is the denominator? Yep. So notice here, freshman is 50, sophomore is 30. People that favor, the total is 38. Okay. Any other questions? All right. 